Today's session, I'm going to look at combining presses, so different presses. So we have the tuck press, the straddle press, the pike press, and the stalled press. So today, I'm going to cover all four of those in, in terms of training them together. Now, most people, when they have all four of those presses, so normally they'll go in the order of straddle press will probably be the easiest, then maybe tuck or pike press, and then finally stall to press. Now that order does change for different people. We're gonna put them in together in a way so we can train all of them at the same time in this one session, but we might be doing different variations of each one. That will make sense as we go. So quickly, I'm gonna run through the different variations of presses that you can do and some of the ways you can make it easier or harder depending on your, on your level. So let's quickly do the straddle press first. So ideally, the straddle press will start on your tiptoes and finish on your tiptoes. Now, if you don't quite have a straddle press yet, how do we make it easier? So we could do an eccentric, so the down only. So I might kick up or jump up and then just come through the eccentric, finishing on tiptoes. I could jump the path, so I could jump up through the straddle. I could use partial range where I raise my feet up onto something. Or I could use the wall assist. So butt touching. Low back touching, mid back, upper back. Now if I have it, I could go down and I could go back up that way. Or I could just do the eccentric and down only. There is the chest to wall version as well. But with this setup today, I would definitely go with the back to wall version so we can combine the other reps or the other variations. Now I'll quickly show the same variations for the pike press and the tuck press. It's the stall to press that gets a little bit different. But let's just quickly run through the pike and the tuck. So tuck will be starting in the tiptoe position, heels to butt, pass through tuck, finish into your handstand, come back down, reverse it, finish on tiptoes. We could do the eccentric only. Or we could jump up, use a little bit of momentum to go up. But I would daily do this slow down. So with the tuck, I'll show a slight, slightly bigger elevation. You could go right up to like a Kia step or something like that. I wouldn't go much over that. You could use a wooden box. Uh, you just have a big gap. So if you're going to use something with a higher raised surface, I would definitely work those slow eccentrics through the bit that you're not um, spending any time in. So elevated. Now the wall tuck one, we can make a, a little bit easier by not bringing the knees together. We could open up into a frog position. I'll show you both. So butt touching, low back touching, get to here, straighten the legs, tippy toes touch if you can, back up. Froggy version's a little bit easier. So you just come down in between with the legs apart. So same again, but this time in pike, so legs squeeze together, legs staying straight, starts on the tiptoes, finishes on the tiptoes. You could train the eccentric only. Or we could use some momentum and jump for it. Obviously we could do the foot uh, raised up as well on the elevated surface. And the wall one, now with the wall one, we have to be a little bit careful because it's a little bit more demanding on the wrists because our hands need to be further away because our feet sweep out further. But same idea. Down would be butt, low back.
Now with the Stalder Press, I wouldn't do a wall version. If you're not up to the level where you can do an eccentric Stalder, either up onto a raised surface if you don't quite have the mobility um, or on the floor, then I'd probably leave the Stalder and work on that separately. Now ideally with the Stalder, we would start from the floor. This is the one that I, up until recently, I couldn't do. Um, I'm still dragging the heels a little bit. Where do you mind that way? So that would be the ideal. You could stay, start on an elevated surface. You could start already in the straddle L. Eccentric would be obviously from a handstand and just the down movement only. Where is he? Come on, out of the way. We could do the partial range where you go for a target. And if you don't quite have the flexibility or the active compression, you could do it uh, raised up. So have your hands raised up on a surface to create more clearance. So that's each of the variations. So you could then just do them, combine them. As, sit down, sit down. You could then combine them as like cluster reps. So basically you just do one exercise. So one repetition of the stalter press, one repetition of the pipe press, one of the tuck and one of the straddle and have as much time as you need between them, trying to decrease the time as much as possible. So I'd, ideally they'll be like cluster reps. We only have like five to 10 seconds or literally just transition to the next one. Now that would work very well, especially if you're using different variations of each one. You might have to go from a wall to the um, floor and vice versa. So let me give you an example of that. So I'm gonna start with the hardest. I'm gonna go with an, say an elevated stalder. Into a pike press with a <coughs> foot assist. So like a partial range pipe press, woo. Into a wall assist tuck. into an eccentric straddle press. Now that's probably an unrealistic set because most people that have a stalled press elevated will be already be able to do the other presses, but you get the idea. Now, obviously you could just link two of them. You don't have to try and link all of them and you could mix the order up. I'm gonna try and get all of them in a row. So I'm gonna try for stalled press, pipe press, tuck press, Straddle press. Now that's one way of combining them. Do you see how I went out of the stalder all the way up to handstand back to the bottom of my stalder and then I went, found the bottom of my pipe press, then went into my pipe press. So they were linked, but there was like a gap in between them because I had to stop one, find the start of the next. Some made sense like coming off the pike press into the tuck press and then the tuck press to the straddle, but some didn't make sense like that bomb of the store I had to get to the start of the uh, pike press. So one way to link them was when I come out of the stalder is not to do the eccentric of the stalder, but leave that until the end of the straddle press.
So you can see there that the actual transition between them changes at the top, not the bottom. So there's a lot to take in there. There's lots of different variations you, you can do, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how you can combine different presses together into the same session. Now, normally when you're learning these skills, I still recommend that you do them separately, work on the areas that you need to, bang out the reps, get the sets and enough conditioning in each of the positions. Make sure you're not missing any big chunks. Most people miss that bottom part of the press. Let me know which variations you've done. Stick it down in the comments. Thumbs up and subscribe would be appreciated. And I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.